Google story, the Rio one, they're raising questions for international corporations who are trying to do business in China right now. What's the perspective here? Big picture, William Reinsch is the president of the National Foreign Trade Council. He also served in the Commerce Department during the Clinton administration. Uh, Mr. Reinsch, let me ask you, I mean, these two stories ha have been really soap operas tracked within the media. <laughs> Give me a sense, because they're now, uh, how much is really uh, affecting trade? Because we are hearing of an increasing number of, of international businesses who had been hoping to bet big on China, but now think that there's really domestic favoritism that, that's squeezing them out of that marketplace. There's definitely a trend here. Uh, <clears throat> I think a, a lot of things that, that are not reported. For our companies, they're seeing more difficulty doing business there. They're seeing more threats to their intellectual property, which, of course, is America's competitive edge. Some cases are, are unique. The Google situation is unlikely to be paralleled by industries and other sectors. But, uh, you know, it's. It, Doing business there is becoming harder and harder, and I think the result will be that Western companies are going to uh, rethink not their presence there, I don't think you'll see them leave, but whether they should expand their presence there or go somewhere else. Yeah, looking at American Chamber of Commerce survey that was released today, it says that 28% of 203 members surveyed said that they're losing business because of a policy in China that uh, really sort of favors domestic firms. If, if Google is, is its own instance, let me turn then to, to what happened last week with 130 lawmakers sending a, a letter to the Treasury Secretary saying uh, that China should be labeled a currency manipulator. That term is going to have implications for trade here. Uh, tell me what your outlook is as to whether or not China will be labeled a currency manipulator. Well, I'm inclined to think they will be. Of course, I should tell you, I thought they would a year ago, and that didn't happen, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure you should believe me. But uh, you can't find many economists who will tell you that the RMB is not undervalued and not, that it's not past time for a significant revaluation. Now, whether they'll do it or not, it's hard to say. Of course, if you're the Chinese government, you'll deny you know, do it, that you're going to do anything right up until 30 seconds before you do it. That's the way the system works. But I think at this point, our government is not going to have much choice but to, uh, to you know, tell the truth, well, explain it, it, what's happening in their April report. You're right. It's hard to find an economist who will say that, that the yuan isn't uh, undervalued. But we did find a very prominent one, a Nobel laureate, in fact, Robert Mundell, who was on this program just last Friday, who said that it, we're focusing too much on the exchange rate. That's not going to help fix the trade uh, disparities per se. In fact, China can't afford uh, itself to let the yuan appreciate because of the, the sort of political instability it would bring the divergence in, in uh, living standards of those in the rural parts of the country versus those uh, in the cities there, that it, it can't handle it politically. Well, what do you say to that? I mean, is the, is the focus on exchange rates misplaced? How do you level the trade playing field? Well, it's not entirely misplaced. I think he's right that it's not the only issue, and it's a fair point that it's a political issue. Uh, he's sort of saying that their politics are more important than our politics. Uh, inside the United States, inside the Congress, I don't think that's going to be, or be a persuasive argument. We have politics, too. We have substantial debt. We have an enormous trade deficit that's not changing. Uh, you've got a lot of pressure in the Congress to do something about it. It's a fair point that this may not be uh, either the most efficient thing or perhaps certainly not the only thing. But uh, I think the political pressure here is going to be irresistible. Yeah. Well, for, for the many, many people who uh, thank China for helping us get out of this uh, recession, it's an interesting uh, question about whether access will continue to be uh, fully allowed. Thank you so much, Bill Reinsch.